What's up, wild people? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Alexandria Denise, and I'm doing something different today. As the 2021 deer season comes to a close, I have to clear out some hides in the freezer. Now I've been wanting to try tanning for a while, but unfortunately every retailer, big and small, is fresh out of fleshing knives. So I gotta improvise and do this the 21st century way. A pressure washer. Ah, so let's get to it. Okay, first things first. You want to test out the pressure washer on a small piece of hide to make sure that the settings aren't too high. If so, adjust as needed. I'm using the Roby 2300 PSI because it's the perfect balance of strength and gentle. Anything too high, you risk tearing a hole in the hide and anything too low may not get the job done. After testing your settings, gently lower the nozzle into the hide to start sweeping away the membrane. It may not look like it, but I'm a novice at this, so I have to take my time. But if you're more experienced, go at your own pace. The tail part was a little tricky, but if you desire to keep it, just simply pull out the tail bone. It'll turn itself inside out and you can pressure wash that. I was successful on a previous hide, but this one just ripped off. Next is the salting process to ensure that all of the blood is out of the hide. You want to use non-iodine salt. Iodine will change the color of your hide and make it hard. Sprinkle the salt throughout the fleshy part of the hide and rub it in. You want to get every corner. Fold the flesh into the flesh and roll it up. You're gonna let the hide bleed out for 24 hours, but I would recommend storing it away from possible critters and putting it on an elevated platform. You'll see why in a moment. Next, you'll want to boil some water only hot enough to dissolve the salt. Putting the hide in hot water would only make the fur fall off. Unless that's what you want, then do it. Other than that, let it get lukewarm. Next is the most important, the soap bath. I'm using Dawn because it's tough on grease and biodegradable. Use warm water and scrub it clean. Afterwards, you can rinse with cold water. 
you need to stop the process for an extended period of time, it's all right, the hide will dry out. Just repeat step three with the salt bath. It will rehydrate the hide and you can pick up where you left off. If you don't have a tanning frame, find a board or any flat surface to nail the hide to. Stretch it evenly from each end, but careful not to tear the hide. And finally, tanning from the famous orange bottle. Put the bottle in warm water to loosen up the solution for at least 30 minutes. Here are some other items for easy cleanup. I'm using a brush to get into the crevice of the hide. The bottle will tell you how many uses you can get per hide. I myself found that I only really needed a quarter of the bottle to get through this hide with some nick picking in between, but you use however much you feel you need. Just make sure you don't overdo it as you could risk making the hide stiff and sticky. And that's no fun. Now here's a step that's just as important as the previous, the sanding, to make the hide soft. I used a grade 3 sandpaper because anything too little or too much might ruin the hide or not get the job done. You also have the option of using an electric sander. Again, use caution. The great thing about doing it manual as I is that you really get in there and put some elbow grease behind your work and use those thumbs to get into every crease and crevice. I'm using a box cutter to cut the hide from holding. Cutting off the edges gives your hide a more pristine look. And done! Depending on your use for the hide, you can either crinkle it up by hand or a semi-rough surface, or just leave it as is. Whichever you choose, feel great in knowing that you were a little more resourceful with your kill, maybe even learned a new skill, and can fully appreciate all that nature had to offer. Thanks for watching.